Our next guest is a legend in the mining industry. He staked one of the first large-scale molybdenum deposits in British Columbia and then raised $185 million to get that project permitted and through feasibility. He's also been a gold miner in China for some time and I believe is one of the few, if not only, gold miners in the country to wear cowboy boots to work every day. And Larry Ray is the president and CEO of American Manganese. And Larry, thanks for being here today. Well, I'm happy to be here. Larry, you've been in this business an awful long time, and you were at the head of the group of people who uh, basically put molybdenum on the tip of everyone's tongue in the investment world. You raised $185 million for your last company. You were very involved in molybdenum. So why now manganese? When we were actually talking to steel companies back in the, <clears throat> when we were doing the feasibility work on our molybdenum project, mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions we always asked them was what else did they, were they interested in besides molybdenum and always the first thing out of their mouth was manganese so hmm. little research showed that there was no manganese production in North America further that uh, it was a strategic metal and it uh, was crucial to the production of steel. You can't make steel without it. In the past, we've seen other metals like molybdenum, uh, rare earths, even uranium uh, gain a lot of traction among investors and excitement. Uh, manganese is essentially a strategic metal. Are we going to see the same thing in this, in this uh, sector? Manganese will be the big buzzword out there. You're starting to feel it right now. Uh, we were first in molybdenum. We're first in manganese. It turns out that we've got the uh, largest low-grade deposit of manganese, if not in the U.S., certainly in the southwestern United States. I've read that there is no substitute for uh, manganese as a metal, and yet you and your company have positioned itself so that uh, you are a producer of electrolytic manganese. So can you also benefit from uh, producing manganese and the price of manganese? Well. Uh, that's a, uh, a question that has to be answered in two parts. First, electrolytic manganese is used in the steel industry. 43 per 40 to 47 percent of it's used in increasing the uh, properties of the alloys of steel. And then something like 32 or 33 percent is used in the aluminum industry, they, in the uh, alloying of aluminum. Okay. And, uh, 17 percent in uh, electronics, low-tech, high-tech, and the balance is used in, um, well, examples like welding. So will you sell by contracts into an American market? That's the obvious market, and, uh, but it doesn't, uh, you know, prohibit us from shipping anywhere in the world because uh, by the looks of all things, we're the lowest cost producer. Okay, let's look at the indicated uh tonnage alone because as we know 43101 rules prefer indicated to inferred which are less certain right away we can see your tonnage you've got almost a hundred million tons inferred in the more certain category indicated you've got another 10 million tons all of this is about 4.5 percent uh, so first let's just talk about that what do we have for inferred resources can we move some of that into indicated in the near term we're planning a 191 drill hole program with circulation, and uh, part of that will remove will move uh, resources into measured, indicated, and inferred, as well as expand the existing resource base. So, when will drilling be complete? Two to three weeks. Uh, we hope to have the uh, drill program started. 197 holes within six months, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to move the drills off. We'll keep drilling. How much of this do you own? Except for a small uh, portion uh, within the Artillery Peak range, uh, which we're working on now, we own about 99%. 99%, okay. So the grade is 4.5% manganese. That's a lot lower than some uh, producers, for example, in South Africa and even China. But you said that you can be one of the lowest cost producers of electrolytic manganese. How does that work? It's all in the processing cost. Okay. And our cost of processing is uh, very, to put it bluntly, cheap. Okay. Um, we just have to drill it and blast it on wide spacing. We, rather than have crushing, grinding, and flotation, we have a hammer mill that breaks it down to a large particle size into a bat leach, 
water percolated through, and then we pump the uh, sulfur dioxide gas to make sulfurous acid, and that's important, it's sulfurous, not sulfuric and it rapidly leaches out in a very short period of time at high recovery. So you have an idea of wh what this is going to cost in terms of operating costs, what would that be? Our calculations according to our 43101 preliminary evaluation are about 44 cents a pound. So how big is the project and how much have you explored? Well we scratched it but past exploration and our exploration would be less than 5% of the project. Less than 5%. Let's go to the map here on Sharono.net. We can zoom right in on the artillery peak project. You can see it's in the US. When we zoom in you can see its position in uh, Arizona. I want to go in right tight on it and just show me uh, how much of this area is the pro does the project take up. The 12 square miles would entail an area about like this. It's a little less, it's a little more irregular than I'm showing, but that would be, that would be it. And there's a road running through the project here? Right up to the, uh, uh, one of the pit faces that we have. You can drive in there at 90 kilometers an hour. What about highways, water, power? Oh, the highway's within uh, 15 miles. Uh, power is within uh, seven, eight kilometers. Uh, even natural gas is within 12 kilometers. Right. So being water right on the property. So do you have a mining permit yet? We don't have to permit the patents, although we'll go through every process within the uh, Arizona state to do that. Um, but BLM land, we have to do. We have to apply for the drill permits. Okay, and you've got experience in this department as well. You've permitted other projects. Well, we've permitted uh, right through to environmental studies on the uh, right through to the environmental permit. Um, on our molybdenum project, so yes, we do have experience in that. So Larry, what do you have to do to put this project into production? Well, we have a timeline, which is really the business plan, and it shows that uh, we're going to be drilling through the next, uh, say, year and a half to maximize the resources to make this a very large project, which should attract some very definite attention from some of the major companies. Mm -hmm. Um, the, there are certain import taxes that are applied not to manganese but to electrolytic manganese. Is a, I think it's 14 percent. Is that That's correct? correct? As they come into the United States, so there's one impetus for you. Right. There's also a 20 percent export tax from China as well. Right. So what does that mean uh, to you and to investors in your company? As a low-cost producer, nobody's going to try and force us out of business. As a low-cost producer, the world is our oyster. Certainly, the U.S. should be looking at any of their electrolytic manganese needs that should be looking to us. Mm -hmm. And with your current account balance, how far can you take this project along? We can't take it that far. We can get the drilling well underway. We can start negotiations for the feasibility and the environmental studies. But we'll be financing this in tranches quite rapidly through. Manganese is not recognized yet by the market, so you don't enjoy a premium share price. But we will once we start building this project up, and that's why we're going to do it in tranches to limit dilution. Uh, but we're going to keep the equipment and the personnel going from the time we start here in mid-March to the time we go into construction. So when do you see uh, first production? Early 2013. Wow. This is really it could be earlier. Um, if I, my understanding of permitting uh, issues on a small project like this is correct, then it could be earlier. Okay. Your capital costs are projected to be $90 million. With costs like that, can you take this one all the way? We could take it all away. As a matter of fact, the last big project we worked on was uh, $180 million just mm -hmm. to get to the receiving the environmental permit and all the feasibility studies and the long lead equipment okay. ordered. So $90 million is half of that. So you've got the experience behind you. Well, typically, manganese producers uh, are owned by huge blue chip companies like BHP. But considering your size, the size of your project, where you're located, uh, and the potential for revenue stream, do you consider yourself a takeover target? We'll be a takeover target once that resource reaches a, a different